Hi everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be using Canvas Workspace. Now I'm using the computer based version, you can do this in the online version, but I'm going to be using a font that I have installed on my computer and that's why I'm using the download version. There will be a link to this font in the accompanying blog post on my Apple Lover 53 website for you. The font is free as part of my Creative Fabrica subscription. You, I think you can buy just the font on its own if you're not a member. So I will link directly to the font. But if you want more information about Creative Fabrica or you think you may want to join, I will post my affiliate link as well for you all in the accompanying blog post which, as I say, will be over on my Apple Lover 53 website. So I've got a new blank page opened in Canvas Workspace. The first thing I'm going to do is come over to the left to the text tool and I'm going to select it. That brings the text cursor up and then I'm going to left click once on the page and that's going to bring the text box. So the first item I'm going to start with is just my individual letter and I'm going to use a capital M and I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard. You can do this with obviously any letter of your choosing. I've seen a lot of these done with like the letter of a first name. I'm going to use the letter of a last name for this particular project but you know play around with it make it your own do whatever you want to do with it with my letter m selected i'm just going to drag it up into the left hand corner and i'm going to drag it out so it's quite big now i'm working on a 12 by 12 mat here and i want to make this you know fairly large so what I'm going to do, I've dragged it out from the corner to keep it in proportion, but now I'm going to drag it down just to extend it a bit. I'm going to come up to the top of the page where the fonts are and I'm going to click on the downward facing arrow and in Canvas Workspace for computer, it by default goes to Antique Oakland. I want to use Times New Roman for this, but again, you can use any font you want. Just try it out. I'll show you the process and then you just choose your fonts and, you know, see what works best for you. So I'm going to choose Times New Roman. Now that's made that too wide for the page. So I'm going to squash it in a bit, but I am going to extend it down. So that is now my letter M in Times New Roman. Now, just to make this easier to work with, I'm going to rotate it to the right so that it's kind of horizontal, but that's not how it's going to end up. So I'm just going to hold the shift key down on my keyboard and rotate it twice so it's now horizontal. This is just so that when I come to do the next part of the text, just makes it easier for me to work with. So now I'm going to click on the text box again and then left click on the page to bring the text box up. And this time I'm going to type the word Morrison just with a capital letter M and then the rest lowercase and just hit return on my keyboard. And it now brings up the name. While the name's selected, I'm going to come up to the top of the page and this time I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for the Samantha font, which as I say is available from Creative Fabrica. Now I can see that this is small, so I'm going to drag it out until it's fairly big. Now this particular font is very, very skinny. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a very, very small offset just to make it thicker, first of all. And then obviously I'm going to need to do another offset to do the inlay technique. If you're using a different font than this, you won't probably have to do this first process. But again, if you're using a font that you particularly like that is quite skinny, then this next step may help you there as well. So I've got the Morrison kind of wide enough at the moment to fit within this area of the letter M. It's already overlapping in places. 
If yours doesn't, you can come up to the top of the page and you can hit the downward facing arrow, which is the negative character spacing, and you can move your letters until they overlap but mine all look okay at the moment. So now over on the right hand side, I'm going to choose the second icon, which is the edit icon. And then I'm going to scroll down to the process overlap and I'm going to hit weld. So that's just welded those letters together that were all overlapping. Now, while I'm still on this page, I'm going to come to the next part down that says offset. That brings up the offset panel I'm going to take it down to 0 0.04 I'm going to say outward and I'm going to untick this option that says create an offset line only around the outer edge I'm just going to see how how I can make this work so it goes around the inside and the outside of the letters with a 0 0.04 offset. So I'm going to say, okay. Now I'm gonna come over to the layers panel and if I select the option that says shape, that's my first typed section. So I'm going to hover until I see the four directional arrows and I'm going to left click and try and drag that shape out of the way. I can't quite grab it because the other letter's in the way. So what I am going to do is use the four directional arrows on my keyboard and see if I can move it out of the way that way. Okay. So that's what I've got now. Okay. So I've been able to move that out of the way. So this one that's selected with the blue bounding box around it is the first one I typed and I welded. The one above it that I'm now selecting is the offset that I asked to create the offset align around the outside and the inside. So this is the one that I'm actually going to use in this particular instance if I was cutting this in vinyl. As I say, this is really very very skinny in places if you're cutting it in vinyl you can do it that way if you want to it's entirely up to you but me personally with this particular font I would probably use the offset so I'm just going to put this one down here out of the way so this is the one that I want to work with now what I need to do I need to create a, a space here within this portion of my letter to inlay this word into it. So I need to create another offset. So with this selected, I'm going to come back to the edit menu. I'm going to come down to offset. And this time I'm going to use a 0 0.12 offset. Again, it's up to you. You could make it a little bit smaller. You could make it bigger. But I've been having a play around with this and for me a 0 0.12 works. So for this one I kind of only really need it to go around the outside I think. So I'm going to selecting the box that says create an offset line only around the outside and so I'm going to say OK. So now that's created me an offset so I'm going to click on the offset and drag it up here. I know there are some extra pieces down here, but I don't really need them. What I'm trying to get is a placeholder, if you like, to put the rest of the text. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm just going to select all these and just move them down out of the way for now. So what I want to do, I want the offset name on top of my letter M. So I'm going to come over to my layers panel. I'm just going to group all these together to see if I can. I want to select the M and I want to move it up to the top and then I want my name. There it is, it's that one. So I'm going to bring that out of the way for a minute. Bring this over. This is the name that I want on top of the M. This needs to be on top of the letter M. So I'm going to bring it to the top, select them both, center them, and then subtract. So that's now cut 
that 0.12 offset out of my letter M. If I fill my letter M with black, I'm hoping you'll see it better. Now I'm going to select the original 0.04 offset and I'm going to fit it within there. All these little bits that were created when I created that 0.12 offset are not needed so I'm going to get rid of those I'm going to get rid of my original one because I don't need it and then what I'll do I'll fill this one in with black in the hope that you can see how it's looking now sometimes you don't see the middles of your like O's or E's so with this bit selected if you hit subtract again generally the punched out areas appear so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to minimize this. I'm going to select everything, hold my shift key down and rotate it back. So this is now how it's going to look. So you'd have your letter M with your punched out section for your inlay. And then you've got your name, which will just slot into the space. Now, like I say, when I typed the very first Morrison name, if your text is thicker that you're going to use for this bit, you don't need to do that first offset. If you're going to cut these in vinyl in the same colour, I would just select them both, right click and make them a group. And then they, you know, won't come apart when you send them over to your machine and you can just cut them all together if you're going to do them in separate colored vinyl then i would keep them ungrouped and then that way when you get this over to your scan and cut machine you can bring this onto your mat you can delete that one cut this in whichever vinyl color you're cutting it then delete that and bring this one back on and cut this okay but for the example that will be in the thumbnail for the way that I'm creating it, it's all cut in black. So I would just select everything and you can go up to the top of the page and do layer and group, or you can right click and group. So it's a fun technique and it looks great if you're doing, you know, like personalized cushion covers or if you're doing like wood rounds for people, you know, as maybe wedding presents or, birthday presents or any kind of home decor it's it's a really nice technique to use that's what I'm calling the vertical inlay technique I don't know what it's really called I've just seen things popping up on Instagram you know where people are cutting vinyl using this technique and I thought I would show how we can do it in canvas workspace so I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.